Hello everyone, today I'm going to be explaining how to make DIY speaker cables. You can make these cables in any length and use whatever gauge you prefer. If you're not sure which speaker gauge to use, uh, take a look at my website. There's a chart there, uh, depending on the length and the, uh, the amount of watts you're going to be using. Uh, you can decide which speaker cable works best for you. I like the 12 gauge cable. It's a little bit more expensive, even though this is a short cable, but I prefer better safe than sorry, plus I had some extra hanging around. So it's some 12 gauge, two conductor cable. Uh, you can buy it at Mono Price or Amazon or eBay. Uh, any of the online retailers should work fine. It works best if you use the in-wall cable, which is this kind. It has a round sleeve. If you use some of the flat cable, it uh, looks a little bit funky, but it still works, same concept. You're also gonna need some braided sleeving. Uh, I like the fire retardant sleeving or the non-fray sleeving. Uh, they both have tighter weaves. This is the non-fray. It's uh, a little hard to see in the video, but if you take a look at some of the pictures, you can tell the weave is tighter and it'll cover up uh, the white on the speaker cable just a little bit better. You can also look at the chart on the website to tell if you use 12 gauge cable, which size uh, sleeving you should use. Um, this is 3 8 sleeving I had hanging around from a larger cable, um, but you don't necessarily need it that large. I have some half inch, 3 to 1 heat shrink. Uh, I like the black heat shrink and I like 3 to 1 because it shrinks down a little bit better, uh, makes a tighter seal on the end. You're going to need two pairs of pants. Uh, if you have four conductor cable, you can buy four conductor pants. And uh, Take a look at this uh, website. There's also a chart showing which size uh, the entrance and exit you need for whichever cable gauge you chose. Uh, I believe these are the 10 millimeter entrance uh, cable pants, which I found work great for 12 gauge cable. You're also going to need some sort of connector. Uh, if you really want, you could just use bare wire, but if you're going to all this trouble to make them look nice, uh, you might as well choose a nice connector. These are some banana plugs. Uh, these are fairly cheap. Um, you could buy all kinds of different brands. The GLS plugs are great, but they're a little expensive. So today we're just making a cheap cable. You can also use spades or pins. Um, it's up to your preference. You can take a look on the website as well. It'll explain the differences. As far as tools, uh, just some basic tools you probably have laying around anyway. Depending on what type of connector you use, uh, you're going to need a screwdriver. The GLS plugs actually come with the screwdriver. Um, it has flat edge and then a Phillips head. Um, but when you pick out a con connector, you should be able to see what type of screw you need. Uh, it's hard to see in the video, but these ones just need a flathead screwdriver. You're going to need some scissors. Uh, for obvious reasons, you have to cut your cable. Uh, measuring tape, so you can measure out the sleeving, the cable. Um, some scotch tape, I'll explain why you need this later, but it's not to hold the thing together. A ruler, this is going to become important uh, when we get down to measuring the amount of cable to strip. And a razor blade to strip the cable. You can use a cable stripper if you like. I prefer the razor blade. You're also going to need uh, either a heat gun, a hair dryer, or a lighter. I don't have that pictured, but we're going to be using a lighter today. Uh, that's it for the parts and the uh, tools you'll need. Uh, let's get on to the construction. First thing you're going to need to do is measure out your speaker cable and sleeving. I like to leave about 8 inches extra on the speaker cable, so the speaker cable is 8 inches longer. Um, this accounts for when you use the pants. You're going to need the pants to cover up uh, part of it. You don't need to waste your sleeving. The sleeving is going to end somewhere here. Um, also, you're going to need a little bit of extra cable to connect the uh, connector of your choice, which we'll be using banana plugs. Um, you can measure out all these exact uh, measurements if you want. You can also just use some scissors at the end to clean it up. So I've already measured out the cable and the sleeving. Uh, my cable's 8 inches longer than my sleeving. And the easiest part of this is just sliding the sleeving over the cable. All you're going to do is push it onto the end and accordion it, as you can see, until the whole sleeve is filled. Uh, if you have a longer cable or if your sleeving is a little bit tighter fitting, you might have to go a smaller amount of time. Um, but you just repeat this procedure until the whole cable is sleeved. Earlier we had some uh, scotch tape. If for some reason, uh, as you can see on this end, the individual connectors are sticking out beyond the, uh, the cable cover, you can use a piece of scotch tape. You simply wrap it around the tip of the cable and that gives it more of a streamlined shape so it won't catch on the sleeving uh, as easily. The next thing you're going to want to do is measure off about one inch of your heat shrink and make a cut and then repeat that for the other end of the cable. We're going to use this to hold the sleeving in place um, so it doesn't slide around underneath the cable pants and it's going to make it a little bit easier to work with. So now that you have your inches of uh, 
heat shrink, you're going to slide it over top of the cable and slide it over top of the sleeving. You might have to kind of fiddle with the sleeving to get each individual fiber under there. You can always push it beyond the sleeving and then bring it back. And You just want it to cover up the fraying um, so that it doesn't get in the way. You're going to use the lighter or the hair dryer or the heat gun, depending on your heat shrink. I might not work with a hair dryer. Uh, this one seems to work best with the lighter. And you're just going to quickly pass it underneath. Try not to hold it there too long because it will start to burn. And you're going to repeat that until the entire heat shrink has shrunk. You can see it's starting to shrink already. The reason I like 3 to 1 is it'll shrink in real good. Um, it also seems to be more uh, resistant to burning. Uh, some of the cheaper heat shrink it will catch on fire if you hold it there too long. You can see it's starting to take shape. You're just going to shrink the entire piece down and then repeat it on the other side. As you can see, uh, the heat shrink is shrunk down all the way. If you look at the pictures, you can tell the 3 to 1 is actually good enough that it will shrink onto the uh, grain of the TechFlex um, sleeving. Next step, we're going to measure out how much of the cable to strip. Um, if you burnt your heat shrink or you don't like the way it looks, this isn't level at all, it's fine. We're going to cover it up with the cable pants, um, so you're not going to see it anyway. What we're going to do is measure out how much of the uh, cable we're going to strip. You can use a pen, or if you just want to remember, I like a felt tip pen. You can just make a little mark, and then we're going to make another mark where the uh, sleeving is going to need to split, and actually it's going to work out right along the heat shrink. You're going to take your razor blade, and you're just going to make a single cut along the sleeve and uh, peel it off and you can make a round cut along the bottom and remove it completely. Now on this cable you can see there's a little fabric in there they use to pull the individual uh, conductors through. You can just take some scissors and snip that off. It's uh, just some fabric. You're not going to need that. And you can see that now we have the cable stripped and all we're going to do is slide the pants over top it should go in smoothly. Um, if for some reason, especially I found with uh, some of the larger cables, if the individual um, cables aren't sliding through the individual legs of the pants, you can put a little dish soap in there uh, to help lubricate it and just push it right through. Once you get the cable pants on, you're just going to slide it all the way to the bottom. You can see the heat shrink that we used before is completely covered. And we have a little bit extra of the uh, connector um, that we're going to need to put the banana plugs on. You should have your banana plugs all ready. You just, uh, depending on the type, you can just unscrew the casing. You can then see that we actually are going to have an extra cable. Um, so you can use your felt tip pen again. Make a little mark. You want to make it just a little bit below the end, otherwise it won't uh, fit correctly. And then we're going to splice off uh, that part of the cable. Now that your cable is the correct length, uh, we're going to need to strip the outer edge of the single cables. If you have a cable stripper, you can use that. I'm going to use the razor blade. Now it's a little hard to show uh, on the video without cutting myself, but basically you're just going to make a circular cut along the bottom and then a straight cut along the edge. Pull it off. Be very careful. Uh, the casing on these individual cables is very thin. If you make a cut too deep, you can actually cut some of the copper wires off uh, and reduce the gauge of your cable. The next thing you're going to want to do is prepare your connectors. Uh, these banana plugs have little screws, so with a regular style screwdriver, uh, you can just unscrew the, uh, the screw. You can see now the tube's completely open. And once we put the cable inside, we'll tighten them back down. You want to try not to touch the copper that you've uh, exposed, uh, especially with greasy fingers. Uh, if you want, you could wear gloves, uh, but I just choose not to touch it. You're then going to Tighten down the screws on your banana plug. If you have a different type of banana plug, you might have to put the covering on first. The ones that I am uh, using today, the covering slides on from the outside. Uh, the GLS plugs, for example, you have to put the covering for the banana plug on prior to uh, tightening down the screws. You want to make sure you tighten down the screws as tight as you can. Uh, this will give a good solid connection. And you can see now, there's nothing in the way. You're going to take the outside part of your connect connector. Make sure if you're using the red wire, then you have the red connector. And you're just going to simply tighten it down. As you can see, it completely covers up the uh, gap that we had before. And then we're going to repeat the same thing uh, for the 
the black connector. Again, uh, if you can, try not to touch the copper. Simply tighten the screws as we did last time. Make sure they're good and tight. Now you don't want them coming out, especially if you have tight gripping uh, banana plugs when you pull out the cable. Uh, you might actually leave the banana plug but pull the cable out if your connections weren't tight. And then we're going to repeat the same step we did earlier. Uh, just put the housing on top. Make sure, this, again, this is the black wire. We're going to use a black connector. And simply screw it down. And you're going to take your pants, push them up as far as they go, so you have a nice snug fit. And you're complete. Uh, some people like to put a little piece of heat shrink here where the cable pants end. You're going to want to do that uh, prior to finishing the second side. You're going to slip both pieces of heat shrink on. You can uh, shrink this side, but that way it'll be on the right part of the cable uh, once you finish the other end. You're going to repeat all the same steps we did for the finish side on the other side, and you'll be complete. Uh, feel free to experiment with different types of connectors, uh, different types of sleeving. Uh, there certainly is more than one way to do this. Uh, the whole point is to make your cables look nice without having to spend a fortune. Uh, take a look at our website for more information. There's uh, some better pictures that show a little bit more detail, as well as links to all the parts that we use today. Uh, thanks for watching.